Welcome to Just Asia, HRC TV's weekly human rights program. These are the headlines. Hong Kong sees protests as court sentences democracy activists. President Duterte tells police to shoot rights activists if necessary. Muslim women win fight to ban practice of instant divorce in India. More deaths in Philippine drug war. Indonesia's Supreme Court rejects appeal to publicize Munir fact-finding report. Three urgent appeals from Sri Lanka and India. Welcome to AHRC TV's Just Asia. I'm Annie Lin. This week, Just Asia begins with Hong Kong, where there's much protest and outrage against the jailing of three democracy activists for their role in the 2014 Umbrella Movement. Hong Kong's High Court sentenced Joshua Wong, Nathan Law, and Alex Chow to six to eight months imprisonment for the nonviolent protest related crime of unlawful assembly last Thursday. Thousands of supporters took to the streets on Sunday to protest the sentences. Rights groups and democracy activists are calling the case against the three political persecution and more evidence that China is tightening its grip on Hong Kong. The Beijing backed Hong Kong government brought the case for harsher sentences against the three, saying previous non custodial terms were too light and did not serve as a deterrent to activists undermining stability. Young activists in particular see the government's actions as a way to deter others from protesting and calling for democracy. Next, Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte has called for police to shoot rights activists who get in the way of his bloody drug war. Speaking following the bloodiest night of his one-year tenure in office, Duterte told officers that if human rights activists are obstructing justice, shoot them. He also threatened to investigate human rights defenders for criticizing him. Human Rights Watch said Duterte's call for police to consider human rights advocates as legitimate drug war targets is a sinister escalation in his rhetoric and he should immediately withdraw his statement or be investigated for possibly instigating or inciting violence. The Rights Watchdog, Deputy Asia Director, said Duterte is on notice that his death threats against human rights advocates could pave the way for prosecution for crimes against humanity. Furthermore, Duterte's assault on accountability highlights the urgent need for a UN-led international investigation into his drug war slaughter. Just Asia speaks to Basil Fernando, Director of Policy and Development at the HRC, for his views. Statements by the present president of the Philippines, Mr. Duarte, regarding open advocacy of killings uh, is one of the most disturbing things that happened uh, in the international community in recent times. No other uh, president has openly advocated uh, killings uh, in the manner uh, it is done by the uh, president of the uh, Philippines at present. Earlier it was the killing of uh, drug, uh, anyone who has alleged to be involved in drugs and the numbers of people who have been killed in uh, that manner uh, had been uh, very large. When the president speaks of human rights defenders obstructing justice, what it means is human rights defenders obstructing his policy of killings. He thinks that killings is uh, justice. Uh, in fact, it is against every norm of justice known to the international uh, law and the human rights law and also uh, the constitution of the uh, uh, Philippines. Uh, this is even going far, far, far worse than uh, the uh, President Marcos who imposed an emergency and also engaged in some extrajudicial killings. But open advocacy of uh, uh, killings was never a, a, a policy. And this is an issue that I think must be having a chilling effect on every person in Philippines. Now, whatever they do, they could be threatened with death. There is no killing uh, people is not the way to conduct uh, a war against drugs. What it means is that 
the legal system is of no use for Philippines. It is the legal system that should be utilized in order to fight against drugs or any other crime. President is virtually admitting that, that the legal system is incapable of doing that. Then the whole legitimacy of the government and its own legitimacy comes into uh, question. If the legal system has defects, it is his job to radically change the system, if necessary, uh, remove many people. Uh, it's a, it's a much easier to, uh, uh, you know, to get remove those people who are not doing their job, uh, rather than to be killing people. What it means for the country is that uh, the, 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 the whole legal system collapses. So you no longer have a country, but you will have the president and his powers of repression. Well, the question is if nobody cares about the law and the, also the international law, then it is for uh, finding ways to assert the law. It is no, no different to a president than to ordinary person. If somebody says, I don't care about the law, I will violate the law, then the law must find the way to uh, deal with uh, such a situation. It's uh, one of those uh, challenges to the whole fabric of the legal system if of Philippines as well as for the international system. India's Supreme Court ruled on Tuesday that the practice of triple talaq is illegal and violates women's fundamental rights. A multi-faith bench considered the matter and finally decided that it is illegal for Muslim men to divorce their wives by simply repeating the word talaq, which means divorce, three times. A 35-year-old mother of two, Shayara Bano, filed a rights petition at the Supreme Court in February 2016 seeking justice and a complete ban of the triple talaq practice. According to the petition, Shayara Bano was at her mother's home seeking medical treatment when she suddenly received a letter with the words talaq, talaq, talaq from her husband of 15 years. She was also denied access to her children. In fact, the Quran clearly mentions how a person may get divorced over a period of three months, allowing for reflection and reconciliation. There's no mention in the Quran of the triple talaq practice, which is outlawed in 22 Islamic countries, including Pakistan and Bangladesh. And yet, the Indian clergy has allowed Indian men to make use of it as an easy and instant way to dump their wives. The Supreme Court ruling is a step forward for Muslim women. Police in the Philippines killed at least 25 more drug suspects from late Thursday to early Friday last week across Manila. In the bloodiest week of President Duterte's drug war, the total number killed was 85. The spike in deaths came as President Duterte cheered on officers involved in anti-drug operations with promises of immunity, promotion, commendation, a reward of 2 million pesos and a holiday to Hong Kong. Human rights activists and opposition politicians condemned what they saw as a disturbing escalation in extrajudicial killings, but the nation's police chiefs said the drug raids will continue. Police records show that about 3,200 alleged drug suspects have been killed in purported gun battles with police. More than 2,000 others have died in drug-related killings. These latest killings have sparked outrage, even among Mr. Duterte's allies in Congress, as one of the victims was a 17-year-old boy. Kian Lloyd de los Santos was shot dead on Wednesday by policemen who insisted he shot at them. But footage from a security camera, which was confirmed by eyewitnesses, showed him being dragged along a street. He was beaten, then forced to take a gun and told to run. Moving to Indonesia, the country's Supreme Court has refused an appeal submitted by Mrs. Suciwati, the widow of prominent activist Munir, about access to the fact-finding report regarding his assassination. Munir Said Talib was poisoned to death by intelligence officer Mr. Polycarpus Budihari Prianto. However, the masterminds behind the poisoning remain unknown. The Supreme Court's decision opposed the Jakarta Administration Court's earlier refusal to publish the fact-finding report. The fact-finding team, TPF, was established by former President Susilu Bambang in 2004. 
the report has some important recommendations which have yet to be taken up by the police and the public prosecutor. For this reason, Munish's widow Suchiwati submitted a petition to the Central Public Information Agency which ordered the government to make public the report and investigate the recommendations. President Yoko Widodo is reluctant to open and publish the report, however, leaving the government to state it has no obligation to do so. Moreover, the government appealed the recommendation of the Central Public Information Agency at the Administration Court and the Supreme Court. Refusing to publish the fact-finding report on Munir's murder will make it difficult to resolve the case. Furthermore, the former head of Indonesia's intelligence agency, Mr. Hendro Priyono, has a close relationship with President Yoko Widodo. Finally, the Urgent Appeals Weekly features three cases from Sri Lanka and India. In Sri Lanka, a resident of Kandy district was illegally arrested and detained at the police station on July 22. When the Sri Lanka Human Rights Commission inquired into this case, it ruled in favour of the victim, directing the District Director of Education to provide better schools for the victim's two sons. Later, the consenting officer recalled the victims to his office for another meeting. He started to investigate the case. The officers threatened the victims and made fabricated police complaints against them. Sudath was illegally arrested and detained to fulfill the whims and fancies of the powerful educational officer. Also in Sri Lanka, police officers have fabricated drug charges against a woman as revenge for failure to grab her land, which would bring them profit by way of sand mining in the area. In India, false charges have been filed against farmers for allegedly cultivating poppy in their fields. The victims claim that the lands they own are Nama land on which it is not possible to cultivate poppy. According to one farmer, it was registered against and notice sent in the name of his dead father. That is all for this episode of Just Asia. For more on these and other issues, please visit www.humanrights.asia or www.alrc.asia forward slash Just Asia. Thank you for watching and see you next week.